come over here to look at an airplane that looked vaguely familiar to me and I had to find out a little bit more. Well, in all honesty, I've seen this at the Aero Show in Germany in Friedrichshafen for many years, actually. So I'm happy to come and see this airplane in the United States. I'm Dan Johnson, and I'm talking with Jean-Marie Gisset from Belgium. And the company is headquartered in the Czech Republic, however. That's where the building happens, Jean-Marie? Yes, exactly. We, we produce now uh, five aircrafts uh, per month in the Czech Republic. Okay. And the airplane that I thought this might be, Americans know as the Gobosh. This is similar, but not the same. It has a common heritage, a common background. Tell me a little bit about that. So the company name was uh, Aveco, and they stopped the production about uh, five years ago. And at that moment, uh, we bought uh, the rights of it. And in the past, it was Aveco, and um, the plane was VL3 in Europe. And the American dealer changed the name to, uh, to Gobosh. And uh, from four years ago, we bought the production, and uh, now we produce it again like uh, VL3. And we want to import it here in the US uh, under the name uh, VL3 but we modify uh, a lot of things. Okay, so tell me a little bit about what you changed about the airframe and then we'll kind of look below the wing and see what's different down there. Okay, we changed a lot uh, on the tail uh, section and the biggest change is the, the wing. And what's different about the wing, Jean-Marie? The, the um, surface is smaller. Okay. That means that the plane is uh, much faster than the, the Gobosh. And uh, so now we want to look below the wing, and as we as the camera looks down here, just by your leg, we can see that there's not a wheel pant on the wheel, and that's because this is a retractable aircraft, and it also has an in-flight adjustable prop. Is that correct, Jean Marie? Yeah, like an option. Uh, you can have it also like a fixed gear and a fixed prop, but what we want to li like uh, to sell it's uh, like this: retractable gear, adjustable propeller, and it's why it's like uh, we, we sell it in uh, Europe for 95 percent in this configuration that yes. we're looking at here okay yes. so i understand that you're looking to make a market entry uh, the name uh, as he says on his shirt here jmb aircraft uh this is not a name they know this quite well in europe now you have a very nice display at the aero show every year i know and other places you go but to the american market this is not a well recognized brand so you're kind of beginning here in the u.s market is that right yes um, in europe it takes seven eight years to have this position now you uh, know we can we are proud to produce five planes a month and in the U.S. it will be the same story. It will take five to ten years to have a brand. Yes, right. That's, that's a very realistic expectation. It takes time. Uh, when we talked before the video started, we talked about Cirrus and brands like Icon. And, well, these are companies that have been working hard at this and spending a lot of money for many years to do yeah. their marketing. And uh, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So we wish you well. But how are you going to sell in the United States and, and who will represent you? So we want to... Uh, into to bring it in the United States like an uh, experimental uh, kit with professional assistance. Uh, a builder build. assist center then. Huh? Exactly. Okay. And uh, for uh, the produce, the importer will be uh, Trimhoff. Okay, and uh, Trim, you're standing alongside me here. So why don't you come on in over on the other side of Jean-Marie here. And uh, Trimhoff is from Norway, you told me earlier. So how are you going to sell airplanes? from Norway into the United States? Uh, we, we, we will be based there. You will uh, come here, okay. Yeah, we will uh, be based in uh, Orlando area. Uh, maybe Lakeland, maybe Cipher Hills. We are not 100% sure yet, but we, within one week we'll be based there. You have many nice choices here in this state. Absolutely. Many airports will welcome you, so Thank you. it's quite different than you're used to in Europe or in the Scandinavian countries where it's much more compact and space is more valuable to everyone and uh, here not so much. You, as you see, lots of airports, lots of opportunity, so that's great. Yeah. So when will you do this uh, trim? We you said one week, that, that's yeah. just to make a decision, but then what? Uh, then we already have two planes here. We okay. have this one and uh, one more over to over in Lakeland. Okay. And uh, we will uh, register them uh, quite quickly now and make uh, demo flights around and um, what we are aiming for is to have one in um, outside of Luke Air Force Base because we have one uh, test pilot over there. Okay. And we will have one in the the Orlando area. Well, Florida is uh, now moved up to the number two state in the nation for uh, pilots and airplanes. So only California is larger. And if you look up in the sky here, you see small airplanes flying all the time. So let's come back to you, Jean Marie. I want you to tell me a little bit about how this airplane performs because. I think people will be surprised. First of all, tell me what engine we have underneath the cowling. On this aircraft, we have the standard engine, 100 horsepower, Rotax. 
uh, it's 100 horsepower and we get uh, one, four, five knots with only 100 horsepower. Yeah, so think about that. We're used to those kinds of speeds, but usually with much bigger air engines, which use much more fuel. We talked a little bit about the price of fuel. It is much cheaper here, but it's still not free, so it costs money if you spend 20 gallons per hour uh, to fly your airplane around. Here, you're only going to spend five gallons or, or so per hour, right? Yeah, it's 5.5 five, five gallon as a maximum cruise speed. It's one for at five top, knots. At top speed, then. But if you reduce the speed to 100 knots, you will reduce the consumption to 2.5 gallons. <laughs> okay. And then you have an amazing range of 1,300 nautical miles. And how much fuel does the airplane hold? Uh, and I, I see it looks like it's in the wing here, I'm uh, seeing. 32 gallons? Okay. All right, I want to ask you, Trim, a little bit about the 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 concept of how to bring these airplanes into the United States and how to get them built. Now, we talked about, Jean-Marie mentioned build centers, and you talked about establishing a location here. Is that the same place? Not necessarily. Uh, we will be located in Florida, so the build center will be in this area, but we will pick uh, the best ones to work with to have the uh, build center, and it doesn't have something to do with uh, our location regarding uh, assembling the plane or flying from, for example, Zephyr or Hills or Lakeland, yeah. Okay, so you're going to establish yourself at one place, but then go investigate build centers that currently exist and ask them to work with you on this. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay, that's it. It's a proven system. We do this all the time. Of course, the owner has to be involved. Uh, the airplane can come from the factory, is it, like this with finished, with the, with the paint finished on it? Yes, and so that's part of the quick build kit? This will be 500 hours. So let's kind of review again. You talked about 145 knots, a stall speed of only about 30 knots, you said. 27. 27 knots. That's very slow. And uh, with the retractable gear, now the 145 knots, does that require the, retract, uh, the uh, in-flight adjustable prop? No. With okay. the fixed gear, you have the same performance, but of course, you, you, you lose in the takeoff. So if you have big runaways, you can uh, buy this aircraft with a fixed, fixed prop and you will have the same speeds. I see, okay. You just set it for cruise speed then? Yeah. I see, exactly. okay. Sure, that makes sense. When will the first aircraft come here that will be built this way? When do you think that will be? But we will go to Sun and Fun. Uh, I think then we will be really prepared and start to get uh, to, to sell and to, to have orders. And we will be also organize to make demo flights. You cannot sell an aircraft if you don't make a, a demo flight. I agree, right. And, uh, we will start to fly before Sun and Fun. But then Sun and Fun, I think we will start to, to sell. And our target is to sell 10, 10 to 15 aircrafts in the first year. Okay, that's realistic, I think. And Sun and Fun is a great show to initiate that. These kinds of events that we're at here at DeLand are very good for demo flying because, well, in a few feet, you're out on the runway and you can go fly and there's almost no weight. So uh, these kinds of shows are important for us too, but Sun and Fun, you'll see lots of people. Yes. Uh, about six times as many people as you see at Aero, so. Okay. And that's a great show too, I love Aero, but uh, it's, Sun and Fun is a much bigger show, much like Oshkosh or Air Venture. That's huge. huge. All right, well, thanks so much for talking to us, uh, Jean-Marie Gassette and uh, uh, Trim Hoff. Uh, let's get some more information from you about how we find all the other facts. First about JMB Aircraft, where do we find you on the web? So we have the website of the company, gmbaircraft.com, and, and you can find a lot on uh, Facebook also. If you put GMB Aircraft, a lot of videos from flying, uh, videos from the production, a lot of information. Every two, three days we post on uh, Facebook. Excellent. Okay, good stuff there. You can find more about this aircraft and all kinds of aircraft like this on bydanjohnson.com.